Welcome, Gamer Nation, to another Basement StarCraft Procast. I'm your host, Basement Cat, and here we have Zayna, 13,979 in Europe, and 1,067 points in Diamond Division, 99 wins, 92 losses, and Pikachu, who usually plays Zerg, but now is playing Protoss, who's 7,267 in Europe, 1,396 points, 404 wins, and 375 losses. This is going to be exciting. Let's go right to the game. Basement StarCraft. And welcome to the first game of the ESL's uh, female only cup number two. I'm actually not sure if this is the first game because there is a little bit of a mess up in terms of the uh, naming of old things as well as the date that they're uploaded all kind of messed up. So this is either game one or game two. I'm not exactly sure what that is. But regardless, let's go ahead and introduce these two players. We do have Zayna as our red Protoss and of course we do have Pikachu as our Teal Protoss. Interesting thing to note is that all the Protoss so far in, or all the uh, players in the finals of the ESL's female cups have all been Protoss. We did have Miran versus Precious, both Protoss players. I, I can't remember exactly who won that, but it was a pretty good uh, match between the, those players. This is a best of three, so we will be seeing at maximum three games between these two players. And I know. A lot of you guys are interested to see how a female gamer will play in StarCraft 2 and maybe a look up to it. As uh, looks like we'll be seeing a, or we will be seeing Chrono Boosted probes coming out for both players. Chrono Boosted just finished for both players, as well as a gateway being put down by both players at the 12 mark. Very identical builds so far. Nothing really too different about either player. We do have an assimilator coming just a little bit earlier for Zayna. No assimilator quite yet for Pikachu. We possibly will be seeing it sometime in the near future as she does have enough money. There we go. Getting the assimilator down really quick there. So Zayna just a little bit ahead on that assimilator. And I'm a little bit... I don't know. The placement of this uh, gateway is just a little bit odd. Just because if you're going to go this far just to place your gateway there, why not put it all the way at the, at the ramp? I mean, I can understand when you place a gateway right over here because it's really close to your base and you don't lose that mining time when that probe is moving all the way out. But it looks like Zayna not really worried about mining time at this point in time because she's just keeping her probe there, hanging out. Looking at the APM, we do see a 68 versus 50 APM. Um, uh, Pikachu just a little bit in the lead in terms of that. But of course, that doesn't really mean too much. It's all about efficiency and how you uh, play the game. So it's brains more than uh, brawn in terms of StarCraft 2. Of course, a lot of APM does help in certain occasions when you are using it appropriately. As uh, Pikachu now uh, continuing to uh, build more probes as well as getting that Cybernex Core right out there. Nice timing there for that uh, Warp Gate. It just went down immediately after it came out, but unfortunately not the same thing coming out for Zayna. Looks like she'll be going. She does have enough money for Warp Gate, but instead is planning on to not go for Warp Gate. So maybe that's a little bit of a miss micro there. We did see in the Huck versus uh, Idra series in the EG Masters that Huck actually went for the Air Weapons level 1 instead of the, for the Warp Gate. That was obviously a miss micro because after that point, Huck was completely uh, phased out because Huck all of a sudden thought that, okay, well, since I have we Air Weapons level 1, really, the only thing that I can use to uh, make use of that is to go for Void Rays or something like that. Or uh, actually, I would have gone for Phoenix because then you could take down Overlords muy pronto. And Phoenixes are a lot cheaper than Void Rays, and you don't need to produce a whole bunch of them in order to keep yourself alive. But, uh, as well as... I can't remember the rest of that game, but anyways, let's get let's get back to this game, because that's what is important at this point in time. We do see one Zealot being attacked there by Zayna's Stalker, as well as another Stalker being Chrono Boosted by Pikachu. Uh, as well as... I'm looking at the units tab, I thought that was a production tab. I was like, wait, wait a minute, where's the where's the stalker being produced? So another stalker also being produced here for Pikachu. Warp Gate Tech just finished there. Looks like Pikachu was just waiting for that uh, Warp Tech to finish before building another unit, but it looks like, okay, there we go. Finally warp morphing into a Warp Gate. Interesting thing to note is that Zayna has, for some reason, still not built Warp Gates. There we go, finally Zayna 
putting down that warp gates at the uh, six minute mark. So a little, not a little bit late. That is very, very, very late because she did have enough money for warp gates. And she really isn't spending it on much right now. So that warp gate tech, I believe, is delayed by accident. Pikachu, of course, now building out some more gateways. Looks like she is doing the macro properly. It looks like looking at her money, it is staying pretty, pretty low. I mean, it's not too bad. As if one immortal will actually reduce this down quite a lot. But expect to see an immortal come out of this robotics facility. Yes, there we go. There's all the money gone for Pikachu. All that money went straight to the immortal. More uh, gateways being morphed into warp gates. As well as another gateway being built here by Pikachu. Let's go back here to the base of Xena. Let's see what she is doing here. Looks like she is also building an immortal. As well as a robotics bay. Wow, one gate robotics bay. That is an interesting build to see say the least or to say the most really because really it's rare to see somebody go for one gate straight into robo and then r into a uh, robe and uh looks like this warp gate tech almost gonna be finished there just in time as this army is now gonna be pushing out here, here for xena uh, I'd, I'd advise against this especially since she is a little bit behind let's actually see what she's l seen so far in the base of uh, Pikachu, looking at the scouting, we do not see any sort of uh, tech here seen by Pikachu. So it looks like uh, Zayn, of course, feels comfortable to move out. But of course, Pikachu with a vastly superior army in this case. One Immortal, five Zealots, as well as five Stalkers. Very, very fearsome force in this case, as well as getting two Sentries. Wow, very diverse here for Pikachu. Let's actually see if she can use it properly and uh, make sure that those... Uh, Sentries get those force fields off or possibly even guardian shields would be good, good in this case because all the units here are ranged at this point in time Zayna with her own uh, Sentry trying to move in here She could possibly split up the army of Pikachu and get some sort of advantage in terms of army She is drawing the army out a nice force field here could split up this army No, no force field going down there quite yet for Pikachu or for uh, Zayna Zayna decides to move all the way back that immortal getting Kicked off. Nice little force field there, but I would like to see it a little bit earlier. Now moving in for the uh, counterattack. Pikachu feels comfortable with the army that she's facing against. And is now moving to try and take on the base of uh, Zayna. Zayna doing the proper thing to build a nexus while moving out. That's what Day9 says, but this time it's going to bite her in the back. She's going to let it. Oh no, she's going to let it go up. I would have really liked to see the cancel on that, uh, but of course... I don't know if Zayna actually saw all the units that she has to face. That is definitely a one-sided battle. Now it is going down. Zealots against an Immortal. You definitely do not want that to happen. Oh, an Immortal needs to go in the back. Oh, no. Losing that Immortal so quickly. This uh, Colossus is going to be very key. Colossus is getting taken down by this Immortal. These Immortals, very, very effective in this battle. No doubt about that. Able to kill all the Stalkers. Very few Zealots here for Zayna. Especially with one gateway, really. She does not have the production facilities to keep up with all this uh, uh, minerals that are coming in as well as this army that is at our front door. So it looks like Zayn and Prosby will be GGing out very soon as it really can't see anything that she can do. No units out here for Zayna. Not even going to pull probes, not even going to bother. Just going to GG out the game. So game one or game two, not sure which one, does go to Zayna. So we are going to move on to game two slash game one in just a moment as I'm stretching my arms. Yes, there we go. Thank you for watching.